sentencing proceedings for fraudster Hildegard Stienkamp resumed this morning in the specialized commercial crimes court. Stienkamp has been convicted of over 300 counts of theft. This relating to the claiming of undue tax refunds from SARS between 2004 and 2016. Now, Stienkamp has told the courts, though, that her abusive husband encouraged her to swindle her employer. ENCS Klonim Timkulu, it's outside court and joins us now for more on this. And Tony, a very warm good morning to you, colleague. What, uh, rather, was uh, Stienkamp uh, convicted for? Take us through, of course, uh, all the charges that she, she faced. Yeah, Dumelo, so uh, we are at the Specialized Commercial Crimes Court, as you said, sitting at Palm Ridge. We are waiting for sentencing proceedings to resume. Uh, they had started in August, in the middle of August, a lot, oh, in, in two months ago, and now they do resume, and it is over those 336 theft charges that Hilda Gatstienkamp has been convicted of. It's a matter that does date back from 2004 in December. She had started to work at Medtronic, a healthcare company, in June, of that same year and by six months time in December she was uh, she started the first of these 336 transactions where essentially she was claiming undue uh, tax for the company or from the company uh, by listing herself as a beneficiary not just herself but her deceased husband as well they were listed as beneficiaries and so that money that was meant to go to her employer or go back to her employer went uh, to her she started off a small amount uh, 24,000 just over 24,000 was the initial amount and I think there were four transactions in the month of December 2004 but those escalated and I recall uh, when she was called up uh, for um, when she was called up uh, during the sentencing proceedings in August that she said they had started those pre the, the, the transactions initially to see if they would be caught and when you know it continued because then they weren't caught at some point she then wanted to stop these transactions but she says her husband would didn't let her stop these transactions. There was a time when she tried to uh, commit suicide and she was actually in hospital and hospitalized for that. And she endured abuse, she says, from her husband when she tried to stop these transactions. And so she effectively couldn't stop. And so they continued over that stretch until December 2016. She did leave Medtronic, uh, the company, the following mm -hmm. year. Um, but in 20, it was only in October of 2017 when this came to light to the company. So she may as well have gotten away with it if she had stopped in December 2016, except that uh, a whistleblower tips the company open. So this investigation started and then they realized Medtronic that all of these things had been going on to Melo. Yeah. So you also understand, I mean, the reasons that she gave the court as to why exactly she had swindled her employer of uh, almost half a billion rand, she seems to place the blame on her husband. Yeah, so this was on the first day of sentencing proceedings. She did say that, you know, she was talking about the abuse that she had endured uh, at her husband's hands. But this wasn't, you know, these transactions and the theft that she had been doing, that wasn't the first time that she had been, uh, she had endured abuse from her husband. She was in an abusive marriage. She said that the abuse started all the way back in 1999. And you can then imagine the stretch um, of time between 1999 and 2004 uh, when all of this started. But then uh, when she was questioned further, on this, uh, this, on the second day of sentencing, she did say that actually, no, I take this back. Um, I'm not going to talk about my husband anymore. Um, and she was saying uh, to the prosecutor, you keep bringing up my husband. I don't want to talk about that anymore. I will take full responsibility for this. She said, I wasn't raised in this manner. Um, I feel bad. I'm sorry for what I did. Uh, but, you know, basically the situation just sort of um, happened and it wasn't her intention to do all of this. So she did kind of go back on saying that her husband had made her do it and so uh, the prosecution was just asking her about that to say well you said this one time and now you're going back on this and she was very aggravated about that and I think I remember that there were tears that were shed then in terms of uh, that testimony saying I don't want to talk about this anymore please stop asking me about this the judge judge um, the magistrate Fenta even had to uh, admonish her basically to say you keep saying you don't want to talk about your husband you know must this not be asked anymore so that what that happened um, and then she did retract that statement so now she says she is taking full responsibility she did finish her testimony then on the 16th uh, and so we're expecting possibly um, 
the curator to be called up. Uh, that was kind of the talk in August because only 30 million rand Dumelo was recovered from the 500 million or 537 million actually that was uh, stolen by Hildegard. So there's a long list of the uh, activities that she had been uh, conducting with that money and the sort of the lifestyle she was living, the houses that she had, the businesses that she had, the overseas travel that was there as well and the gambling as well, uh, a big part of that as well, that she would spend um, a lot of time uh, spending at one point uh, more than 67 million rand over a five-year period um, at Empress. And this is only because the records of Empress go back five uh, years, so it could have been more, who knows. But So that was sort of what she did with that money, and only 30 million of that 537 million rand Dumelo was recovered. Yeah, and Paul Tony, of course, before I let you go, in as far as today's proceedings are concerned, uh, what time can we expect sentencing to, to begin? Yeah, so um, the sentencing proceedings do continue. Um, I think they might have resumed now. We had been waiting for the prosecutors to be ready, I was told, and obviously then the judge to make their way. Last month, they started at around 10 o'clock. And if you remember the one day on the Monday, there was load shedding and then proceedings uh, resumed a little bit later. So now we do expect that things should be getting underway shortly to Melo. All right, of course, uh, we'll let, of course, uh, our viewers in on the very latest. Uh, coming us out of court with you, of course, Tony, as our ears and eyes on the ground, Tony Mtim Kulu for us ahead of uh, the sentencing proceedings expected to begin, or at least they have in as far as Tony understands at this point, uh, for uh, convicted fraudster Hildegard Stienkamp. We understand uh, defrauding her employer of close to half a billion rand, facing 300 counts of uh, theft relating to undue tax refunds uh, from SARS. This between 2004 as well as 2016. We'll bring you the very latest with Tony Mtim Kulu.